Howdy folks, I want to show you this cool keyboard mod I made and the whole process it took to get there. This is not a how-to video, this is my adventure in a do-it-yourself project. If you are a do-it-yourselfer and you want to do this, you can probably figure out your own process from what's here though. So to start, I was inspired by this video on changing the layout of a keyboard. Since I just wanted a MIDI controller, I picked up a cheap one, the Keystation 49 from M-Audio. Or Maudio? I don't know. I opened it up to see about swapping keys around and ran into this. Whoops. <laughs> so here's the thing. The keys are fused together. Uh, I thought of just taking a hacksaw to them, but you know, then they wouldn't be able to attach to the back. So that's the first problem. The second problem is that the keys can't simply be rearranged however you like. It doesn't look like it until you pay close attention, but the keys on a piano keyboard are actually not all the same shape. So even sawing them apart wouldn't be enough. The only other thing I could do was somehow make new keys, but I didn't have a way to do that. Until Christmas! You see, we got a 3D printer for Christmas, and I realized, hey, I can now make plastic in whatever shape I want. The keys are plastic. It, there's a connection here. So I went back inside the keyboard to get ideas, and I came up with this one. The first thing was to overcome the different shaped keys problem. The solution to this was to make them all the same width, meaning the white keys would all be thinner. The main idea here is that this plastic piece is screwed into the rail that holds the keys and stays there permanently. Then it has slots in it that are matched by the tabs on the back of the keys. So you can just swap out the white and black keys without having to open up the keyboard. The thinner white keys could then be widened by some piece that sits on top of them, based on where the other nearby keys are arranged. This might have been a good way to do it, but before I got that far, I ran into the idea of a Janko keyboard. A Janko keyboard takes a different approach and has all keys being the same size, and you'll see in a minute as we put it together. This is amazing for a shifting layout. You don't have to move the keys, only change colors. This means they don't have to fit into tabs, and groups of them can be screwed permanently into the chassis. As soon as I saw this, I knew that was what I wanted to do. So here's the design and how I put it together. The first step is to open up the keyboard and remove the original keys. You have to open the chassis with a bunch of screws, and then once inside, each octave of keys has a few screws holding it in place. Remove all of these. The new design has keys in groups of four. I chose this because a set of 12 was a lot longer of a print. And with groups of four, there's still one screw hole already available to permanently attach this group of four. And it's easier to deal with if something goes wrong, or like if the keys break or wear out later and need to be replaced, I only need to replace the little piece, not the gigantic octave. After 3D printing, there's also some cleanup of the support material. Next is to install all of the keys. You have to get the underhooks in the right spot, line them up with the buttons, and then screw the head into the rail. Once those are all installed, you can add the key tops in whichever arrangement you want. For most musicians, this would probably be a standard piano layout, which in the Janko style looks like this. I also plan to design and create a separate version of it that doesn't have removable key tops. But for myself, I want to be able to rearrange the keys for different tunings. Some of them will be 12 keys per grouping, but some will be any other number like 7, 9, 13, or 22, for example. Anyway, adding or changing the key tops means I had to put holes in the keys that match up with the pegs on the key tops. What I learned quickly about 3D printing is that the size of the things printed varies enough that it requires another layer of problem solving. The trick is both the holes and the pegs vary in size and on both sides, so the variation of your fit for a key and key top is four times as much as the error bars in printing size. Remember, they have to be tight enough to not fall out when playing, but loose enough that you can remove them to swap them out. Since printing the pegs too big obviously doesn't work, and printing them close to the right size will result in tons of wasted parts, I printed them on the small side and came up with this high-tech solution. Putting tape or paper in the hole to fill in a gap and add the needed friction. Once you've put it all together, you have a playable keyboard, and thanks to the design, I can also arrange it for any tuning I like. I have two different designs because I built the four row version first, but later decided to try out the six row. The spacing between keys is pretty even, though sometimes you will get the edge of a key touching another. As far as playability, it works well, and I can even do glissandos on it. But I wouldn't let a kid mash on this. I don't think it has the same tolerance as a regular keyboard for sideways stresses and being beaten on and that stuff. 
but I do not know for sure. I haven't really worked with PLA for that long. Anyway, that's it for this project. I hope you enjoyed it. By the way, if you want a Jenko keyboard made this way, let me know by email. It's in the description. I've been considering whether I could make kits that just require a screwdriver or a fully pre-converted keyboard ready to go. Um, I've been trying to figure out how many keys, how many rows, because there's different size keyboards and everything. So I don't know, and this is such a niche thing that I don't want to build anything before I know it'll be worth the time and effort to do so. Anyway, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Later.